You are listening to the Soul Strategies Podcast with your hosts, Z Cohen Sanchez and Chris Abramson. If you're running for office or thinking about it, you're in the right place. We hope you enjoy the latest episode and thanks for tuning in. You, you, you guys can call me AOC. Mike Pence okay. can't call me I AOC, but you guys can All right. Oh, okay. I'm going to get imposter. All right. Is there a way to mute yourself? <gasps> uh, yes, on disc. Oh. <gasps> Rack snack. I didn't even know I recorded myself. Ma'am, ma'am. I can't kill Pokey, she's so nice. Are you safe, ma'am? Okay, I think I have to do it. (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Pokey. It was an honor. It was an honor. (gasps) Okay, that scared me. How do I call a meeting? Oh, it's totally toast. How do I call a meeting? It wasn't him. I figured it out. Okay. It's okay. Ilhan Click on the hold. I passed AOC on my way up. Did you murder Myth in cold blood up there? Me? Mm hmm. No. That's good enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be more observant. Okay. <gasps> now I'm murdering a sitting congresswoman. After everything we've been through. I can't even vote in this election. His I'll voice is so you. deep. Uh, AOC. What? I didn't call it. Uh, uh, how's your day? My day's going great. <laughs> What's it good. like to just be able to go to the doctor and not be scared about going bankrupt? You say, I have this problem, and then they prescribe you the medicine, and then you just go pick it up, and that's it. And then you go home and you Google how much it would have cost in America and you cry. <laughs> I can't even imagine that interaction without a credit card or some sort of cash payment. Oh, Toast was with me the whole time. But am I being uh-huh. marinated? Is that the term? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> that is the term. That would hold me. Here's I the was being marinated. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> if you need help figuring out your voting plan, go to IWillVote.com. It, you'll figure out your polling location, what early voting mail-in, everything. Bye, everyone. Hello, everybody. It has been a while since we've gone live like always just give me a second to share this out and uh, also waiting for folks to jump on and while we're doing that um, you know one of the things that I think is really important is that we um, just go over what soul strategies actually does because a lot of folks you know you guys are tuning in for the first time Um, You don't know necessarily what we do, which is okay. So um, what do we do? So we are a field company. We work with uh, primarily progressive candidates um, that are no corporate money candidates. We help them out fundraise their incumbents. Uh, We help them with social media. And as I said, we help them with field operations. So that's primarily what we do. Um, Our real bread and butter right now is fundraising. And the reason why that's our bread and butter is because it is so needed um, amongst uh, progressives right now, to be honest. Uh, This is something that a lot of campaigns do not prioritize. And because of that, unfortunately, a lot of these campaigns uh, don't go anywhere because they don't have the funds uh, to be able to to make it their campaign move. And so we think that that's really, really important that you are able to fundraise and able to make your campaign move in a really effective professional way. Um, So again, I apologize, but I'm just doing a quick share out of this so we get some more folks on. As always, if you have questions during this process, uh, somebody uh, had actually asked if Chris was going to be joining. No, Chris is not going to be joining today. Um, Chris is working at the moment um, with with some folks, so uh, it is just me. So, hey guys. <laughs> um, cool. So, today is exciting because... I mean, who doesn't want to talk about exciting progressives and what they're doing right now? Um, Just to preface this, I say this every single time, this is going to be a short live, but this actually is going to be a short live because I have a hard cutoff for a call. Um, But I did want to jump on and talk with you guys a little bit about uh, AOC and Twitch. So for those of you guys who don't know, uh, AOC 
um, went on Twitch either last night or the night before. I can't remember. But uh, in the last couple days, she, she went on Twitch. And it was the third most popular uh, Twitch uh, live stream of all time, which is crazy. I mean what can this girl not do, right? <laughs> um, but uh, not, you know, obviously, like, AOC has become really famous. She's really popular. And for all the right reasons, she's amazing. Um, but some folks have asked, you know, especially for more local races. So as for those of you guys who don't know, AOC was getting out the vote on Twitch. I think she was playing, I can't remember what game she was playing. Among Us, I think is the name of the game, um, with Ilhan Omar and a couple of other folks. Um, and, you know, tons of people watched. I think 400,000 people tuned in. But to be clear, she was not campaigning for her, uh, for her congressional race. She was uh, campaigning, I believe, for the entire nation. So for, I believe, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to get out the vote, to make sure that people are voting um, just in general, right? Like just making sure that people mail in their ballots, that they get out the vote. And this is all super important. Um, and so we had some folks ask about them doing things like this. And we wanted to jump on live and talk about that because, you know, Twitch and some of these new platforms are so incredible and can be utilized in great ways. We, I mean, we saw this happen a couple of nights ago with AOC and it can be utilized for your campaign too. Um, but the question really comes down to is what audience are you trying to reach? So one of the things that, um, you know, became really popular as well this year is TikTok. Um, and TikTok has been started to be used by politicians all over the country as well. Um, the difference is, again, is we have to ask ourselves, what audience are we trying to reach? So TikTok, I know that in March, when I looked this up, and this could be very different now, it probably is, but in March when I looked it up, only about 5% of TikTok users were United States citizens, and most of those folks were not actually of voting age. They were younger than that, right? So um, in terms of reaching out for votes using TikTok, probably not going to be a winning strategy, right? Um, not to say that you shouldn't use platforms like this. In fact, and you can uh, utilize these platforms not always just to get votes. There could be other reasons why you're utilizing the platform. But the question that we want to ask you before you utilize a platform like TikTok, Twitch, things like that, is that what audience are you trying to reach? Now, when AOC and Ilhan Omar used it, what was so great about it is that they were trying to reach a wide audience, right? They were trying to get out the vote nationally. And so to be able to do that on a platform like Twitch makes so much sense. It really does. Um, but if you were, say, running for a city council race, um, you know, out in Colorado in a small town, maybe not the strategy that we would suggest. Again, not to say that you shouldn't use it, just posing some questions for you to think about when you're thinking about what strategies you're using for your campaign. Um, but another really interesting thing that I wanted to talk with you guys about, and feel free to jump in the conversation if you're watching, is that one of the, the greatest things is about AOC using a platform like this is to show that progressives are becoming really, really in touch with finding new ways to reach audiences. And this is something that's become even more important during COVID, right? Um, we all know, and I will say this a thousand million times, and I will never ever tell you guys otherwise, that the way that progressives win campaigns is knocking doors. Knocking doors for progressives like ourselves wins the war. We're not centrists, uh, we're not Republicans. Throwing a bunch of money into ad time, into things like that, is not going to be as effective. The return on investment is just not as effective as knocking a door. In fact, I think I saw just the other day, and if any Anybody's curious, let me know and I will find the article so I can send it to you. Mailers, right? Almost every politician now uses mailers. And I just, every time, <laughs> every single time I see this, it just drives me nuts because the reality is, is that the return on investment for a mailer is just not there. It wasn't there to begin with and it's really not, it's even less now than it was back then, right? So originally, when they did studies on this about 10, 15 years ago, when it came to mailers, um, they compared two different neighborhoods, 
and they saw, you know, they, they sent out mailers to Juan to see basically would it change the results of the election. And they did a survey as well. And it turned out that only about between three, two and three percent of folks actually voted based on a mailer, right? Now, they recently redid that study um, just this year. It's dropped down to 0.02%. 0.02%. I just want you to think about that for a second, right? <laughs> like 0.02% of folks are actually voting based on a mailer. So you, as the candidate, could be spending thousands and thousands of dollars on something where you don't have a return on investment. So, you know, and you're going to hear me talk crap about mailers all the time because I just, I mean, I never thought that they were effective. And now with the new studies coming out, it's become even more uh, evident that they're not effective, right? Um, and so what I'm trying to say here is that some of these old practices, things like mailers, um, you know, some of the more traditional, uh, quote unquote, traditional campaign methods are just not effective anymore. And so one of the most wonderful things about AOC's campaign and some of these other really top progressive campaigns is that they are meeting the moment. They're saying to themselves, we cannot continue to do things the way that we have always done them. And so we need to find new ways to reach out to folks. And Twitch is a great example of that, right? There are a lot of people on Twitch that are not necessarily politically engaged. There are a lot of people on Twitch that are politically engaged, I'm sure, but there are a big majority of folks that are not politically engaged. And so instead of looking at, for the places where we will find people that are politically engaged, we need to start looking in the nooks and crannies for the places where folks are not politically engaged, but be could become politically engaged. And Twitch is a brilliant example of this. But there are other ones too, right? Um, there are other places where we're, we're finding that people are not politically engaged, but could become politically engaged. Um, one of the things about AOC's campaign back in 2018 that was really important was the amount of folks that they registered, right? The amount of new people that they registered to vote. And this is something that's really important in progressive campaigning is that your win number needs to be based on past elections. Yes, that is correct. But you also need to be looking at how many new voters do I need to register in order to, you know, double or triple that that win number. Because the thing is that there are no guarantees. We don't know, are more people going to vote in this election than in past elections? We don't know the answer to that. And so to be safe, uh, especially as progressives, we want to get new people engaged in the process. This is something that Bernie Sanders did absolutely brilliantly was that he engaged new people in the process. And so as progressives, we need to continue that fight in engaging new people in the process. This is what we need to be doing. And so I just, you know, praise, so much praise to, to AOC and AOC's uh, current team um, for, for thinking about using a space like Twitch um, to engage new voters. And there are plenty more places out there where we can be doing this and where we should be doing this. Not all of them are necessarily free like Twitch is, which is one of the things that are, that's really great about it. Um, but there are a lot of spaces that are untapped that we need to be tapping into. And so... You know, a lot of folks think that, you know, we I actually had had a conversation with somebody yesterday, um, a, a client um, who was talking about potentially using a space like Twitch for for their candidacy, which is not until 2022. And my answer to them is always this. First and foremost, we have to be able to raise money so that we can start engaging in spaces like that because the reality is that as the candidate yes you should be engaging in spaces like that but you need staff and you need folks to help you to set up spaces like that to come up with creative ways to tap into not engaged voters to find ways to begin to register new voters and so in order to do that it is really important that you raise the money so that you get the staff that you need to be able to pull off operations like that. Um, so my answer to that candidate was, should you use Twitch? 
Absolutely, you should use Twitch. Should you use to Twitch tomorrow for your campaign? Absolutely not. So it's not only about the platforms that you're using and the tactics that you're using, but it's also when do you use them? When is it strategic for you to be using those platforms, right? Uh, two years before an election is not the strategic time to be using a platform like that. However, what is strategic two years before the election is for you to be raising that money so that you can get to a spot like that. And I know that you can do that. So a lot of people that we talk to um, are really afraid of, of raising money um, for a lot of reasons. And this is the reason why uh, Soul Strategies mm -hmm. exists, is that we are, we want to provide, a, we and we do provide a space where, you know, being able to raise money is, you know, it, it doesn't just become something that um, is scary or, you know, or is unattainable. We hear that a lot too, right? That it's, oh, for me, I'm a grassroots candidate and so I can't raise money. And all of those things are false. You absolutely can raise money and you absolutely should raise money. Um, and, and you need to raise money. And so we want, we, we have created a space so that we can train you in how to do that so that we can walk you through that process. We are not, as I say all the time, we are not consultants or I don't think of us as consultants. We're a political organization. We help with the grunt work. And the reality is, is that fundraising is grunt work. Fundraising is not always the most exciting thing, but it can be really exciting when you start seeing those dollars rolling in, which everybody that we work with has seen um, and is going to continue to see. So if you, again, if you are thinking about running in 2021 or 2022, uh, or you have run in, you're running in 2020 and you are very sure that you're not going to make it because maybe you, you know, didn't raise money early enough. Uh, you weren't able to get a staff. There is no shame in having run a race and not knowing what you're doing, right? There's no shame in that. The fact that you were able to get out there, show yourself, um, put your name out there, put put yourself uh, in a vulnerable position means that you have the guts to be a great candidate, right? Same thing with a nonprofit organization. Just because you fail doesn't mean that your nonprofit sucked. That do it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you didn't have the guidance along the way. That's all it meant. I've seen some of the best nonprofit organizations start out on a terrible foot because they didn't know how to fundraise and so they were like you know what we're just gonna wing this and you know what ended up happening they all end up running out of money they all end up having to let go of staff but there's no reason why you can't turn that around that can be turned around easily we, we turn things around like this all the time it's just a matter of being willing to get the help to make that turnaround happen so you know if you as i said if you're a candidate running in 2020 um, or 2021 or 2022, uh, this is the time. If you're running in 2020, obviously, you know, there's only so much we can do at this point for your 2020 run, but please consider running a really serious campaign if you haven't been able to pull that off yet in 2021 or 2022. And don't feel ashamed. Don't feel defeated. Don't feel that, you know, you, you did everything wrong and you don't deserve to run again. I hear that a lot too. I mean, that is all just false. Um, you're great. You will run a great campaign, um, but you just, you need the guidance to make that happen. So, uh, in conclusion, um, again, apologize for it being a shorter stay with you guys. We are so busy this week, which is really exciting that, that we're so busy. Um, it, you know, so many people want to run. We're, we're keeping up with everything. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're doing a little bit shorter live, but, um, in terms of the future and what, what is happening for next year, we have candidates that are geared up and they are ready to go and they are starting November 4th. So I wanted to tease this out a little bit too, is that our first cohort of fundraising of, um, sorry, of candidates that are going to be fundraising, uh, for the 2022 run are starting in, on November 4th. And the reason why we're doing that the day after the election is because 
those folks are running in, in primarily pretty big races and they're going to need to raise a lot of money. Um, but even for folks that aren't, we want them to have enough time to be able to put their field operation together, to be able to hire the people that they want to hire and not feel rushed and not feel like everything's down to the wire all the time. So if you are the type of person that fits in any of these categories, um, you know, you've been thinking about it, even if you've just been thinking about it, but you don't, you're, you're not ready to commit to fundraise yet. You're, you're just thinking about the idea of running might be a cool idea. Um, reach out to us. I mean, we have staff that are here to answer your questions specifically on what you should be doing. Um, and all that jazz. The other um, thing that I wanted to mention that's really exciting is that we have partnered with an organization called Run for Office. Um, for those of you guys who don't know about Run for Office, I really encourage you guys to look them up today. Um, Run for Office is a website where you can put in your address and every race that you are eligible to run in, um, obviously there are age restrictions and other things, but every, um, demographically speaking, every race that is open to you uh, is listed right there. And you have uh, all the cutoff deadlines, all the information that you need on those races. And so it is just an invaluable tool. I mean, before this, guys, I'm telling you, it was painful to say the least to find races. Um, sometimes Secretary of State websites wouldn't have them up for, you know, until two, three months before the election. And if you're an everyday working class person, that's not really doable, right? I mean, to find out three months before an election and be able to raise money and run um, is, is not doable. And so this website and the folks that run it have done such an excellent job and they have very a very similar uh, mission to what Soul Strategies mission is. Um, and they are offering to all of our clients free training, which is just I mean, it's just amazing. It's like, it, I mean, why wouldn't you do it, right? I mean, it, it's free training. So if you are interested in learning more about that too, um, please again, reach out to us. Um, again, shout out to AOC, uh, Ilhan Omar, all the other folks uh, that participated in the Twitch uh, almost experiment, I guess you could say, uh, but ended up being super successful. I, we're just, I mean, I'm so proud. Um, to have gotten to be a part of AOC's field program, I'm running that field part of that field program in 2018, and um, I'm just so proud to see you know the work that that she and other progressives are continuing to do in expanding, um, you know, expanding the expanding the ways that we can reach out to new voters and bringing more people into the political process because. Let's face it, that's what we're all here for. We're here to bring people into the political process. So guys, thanks so much. This was great, this was fun. Um, again, if you have any questions, throw us a DM. Is that a thing? I don't know, I'm, I'm becoming old, guys. I'm about to be 30 in February. So um, send us a DM, um, You know, tag us uh, on Instagram, Twitter. We are going to be live tweeting the debate tonight, which is uh, gonna be funny, but also pretty painful. Uh, so if you wanna jump on Twitter and check that out, uh, please do. Uh, thanks, guys, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day.